Okay, so we're moving on to leaps and jumps. So just to remember, turning jumps, if 90 degrees or more is missing, you would award the value part that's in the code. If it's a split element, then if it's less than 135, it would be recognized as an abstract jump, maybe just an A. So we don't want trunk movements in between skills. We'd like to see the gymnast, if she's doing a, a leap to a jump, to keep her body straight um, in nice alignment as she brings her back foot in to take a jump. We're going to evaluate some height. Obviously the split, again, greater than 135 and then up to two. Exactness of position. We would like to see splits being parallel and straddles being parallel to the beam. Body posture and alignment in the jump and the precision, especially precisions of turning jumps. We're gonna take a look first at this combination. She's doing a split jump to a quarter straddle. She's a little bit short on the split. She does do the quarter before she does the straddle, so we would award that the C. But as you can see, her legs are a little bit low. So there's her split. So I'd maybe take an 05 there. She does the quarter and the straddle. Her legs are not parallel to the floor. They should be a little bit higher. She is allowed to be in that straddle pike position. However, her legs still should be up a little higher and parallel to the floor. So we'll compare that with this. Sometimes in fast motion, that leap doesn't necessarily always look like it's 180. So you really need to watch a lot of leaps and jumps on video to train your eye to see that 180. You know, she is um, definitely in her 180 split there. She has good body position, her, shoulder her shoulders are pressed down. And then as she does her straddle jump, Again, you're first seeing that in fast motion, you think, oh, I don't know if that's really 180, but when you look at that, her legs are more than 180 and they're directly out to the side. So if you do have a straddle jump that has maybe one leg slightly in front of the other, you might take a half a tenth on that. So we'll look at another combination. She's not certainly not 180 split, but she's definitely close, pretty close there, maybe a half a tenth. But I think in fast motion, I might have thought differently. Shoulders got a little flex foot in the beginning too, but overall, I think her body alignment is pretty good. So I maybe would take a tenth on that. So we'll talk about some turning jumps and just let you look at this one first. So obviously, trying to do a split full. So if you notice, she's turning, she's actually facing you when she takes off. And when she lands, she's probably facing about a half instead of the split full. And we so often see these jumps cheated. So you definitely wanna watch their feet on the takeoff. So she starts her jump and right here, she's already starting to turn. She's dropping her shoulders, dropping her head. She's still on the beam and she's still on the beam. And her body's turned almost to the end of the beam before her feet ever leave the beam. She's definitely short on the split. So my judgment call in watching her, I would probably give that a split half and I would probably take about a tenth and a half on it. It certainly is because you can see where she's landing. She's almost landing sideways. That's really not more than a half. Um, evaluating the sheep jump. Um, the head must release backward past the vertical line. That is a requirement. If there is no head release, then it, it it's not a sheep jump and it's an A. The feet are expected to be at head height. If they are at their shoulder or upper back, it's an up to one. But if they're at their hips or no backward head release, regardless of the leg height, you credit it as an, a bent leg jump, tuck jump or an A. And then there's an insufficient arch deduction as well. So we're gonna look at hers. And in fast motion, it didn't look too bad. She does kind of have the head release, but her heels are not really any higher than her, her buttock area. She doesn't really have much of an arch in her back. And basically she's got that head release in the upper shoulders, but her feet 
don't really go much past her buttock area. So my feeling is I would give that an A. Here's a look at another one. So it's not great. She is starting to get her feet up there a little bit. Just at that last second, she's got her foot there kind of up by her shoulders. And I would definitely take a leg separation as well. And she does have the head release. So I'd be more likely to give that, but I may take two tenths on the jump. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna look at this combination. switch leap to a split three quarter uh, definitely insufficient split bent knee her legs are uneven there she needs to hit 45 on the switch leap but she's close but she's already got some body posture issues um, and definitely precision issues so that's about where her split is bent legs a little flex speed Leaning forward, so her body posture is a little weak there as well. Now, she kind of straightens her legs. If he thinks that she straightened her legs all the way, you would not connect these two jumps. Her feet are also apart. And then that's a judgment call as to whether you're going to give that 135. I think she's probably close to the 135, but definitely uneven split. So I would definitely be in the, probably the, two tenth, two and a half range on that. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about Sassones. So on a Sassone, it's a two foot land on one foot. The legs should be in a diagonal position with a 180 split with the front leg being a minimum of 45 degrees. On her Sassone, she should be a little bit more diagonal and definitely I would like to see her chest up a little bit. So we'll look at this one. She had a little bit of body there. She leans forward, but she does pull her hips underneath and does jump straight up on this song. So I think definitely a good thing for leaps and and watching their hips rise is that they are pulling their hips underneath them so you see she's in a 180 maybe even a little more back legs a little higher than the front and so even though she's stepping through to Sassone she has her hips back but she does pull them up so you do see her hips actually rise on the jump and she has that beautiful 180 split Okay, so we're just going to look at some series. Um, all series are considered broken if there's a stop between elements, a loss of balance between the two elements, um, any deviation of the body movement not in line with the beam. Obviously, if they reposition their foot or their feet, um, if they take an extra step or a hop or a little jump in between the elements, and if the legs straighten all the way between the elements. So if they land in plie, and their legs totally straighten and plie again to initiate the jump into the next element, then it would be broken. You do sometimes see them land in plie and straighten just a hair. I would definitely take that as a tempo possibly, but certainly not broken. Uh, their legs need to completely straighten between the elements. So we're going to start with some dance series and mix series. Um, the lack of tempo, poor rhythm between the elements in the series. Um, slow and continuous and in line with the beam is up to two. An arm circle does not necessarily make the series if the body continues the movement. Um, dance elements, cat leaps or hitch kicks. As we tried to clarify the cat leap a little bit more, um, but if the series, the series is broken if the free leg drops and lifts again, and it's also broken if the trunk stops a forward movement. So we'll just take a look at this first series and you can determine what you think. It starts out looking good, but, but she definitely has the uneven legs. She's jumping, but she's not quite getting that back leg back fast enough. 
So she's not in a 180 split and she definitely has that unevenness. So my feeling is probably two to three on that lead because of the uneven split, um, not parallel to the floor and a little bit of lack of split. We have a little bit of body posture issues. She doesn't really totally get her hips underneath her. She's got some bent legs, definitely not in a 180 split. So I um, might be in the two tenth range there. And she does straighten and bend again, but she doesn't quite straighten them all the way. She does keep them bent. So a little tempo rhythm in that. And as you can see there, definitely the unevenness of the split and the body posture on the landing, as well as her feet aren't quite together. So it might take 05 on that landing as well. Okay, so this little girl. So she's got some flat feet. She's already got some body positions going into that. She does quite hit the 45 and she's almost at her 180, but she definitely has some feet issues and a bent back leg. So I might take uh, maybe a 0.1 to 0.15. And then she does stop. So she's breaking the line of the beam and also her legs have straightened all the way as well. So I would have broken that series. Straddle jump, not too bad, but a little bit of a deduction for insufficient split and her legs could be a little bit more parallel with the floor. So this one, you have to decide whether you're giving that a C or not. Um, remember the, the quarter straddle jump is a C if they do the quarter first and the, that the straddle is facing sideways. So here's her switch leap. It isn't too bad, just a little bit lean forward, maybe only take an 05. But on her quarter straddle, she's not really turning the quarter. She's maybe turning an eighth, if that. The straddle position is not too bad, but our likelihood was we would get that a B. We, the straddle jump facing sideward is the C. You want this quarter jump, quarter turn to the side straddle to be facing sideways. And she doesn't even really land sideways. She's a little bit shorter there too. So here we have pike jump to an attempted split full, which not a split full. So her pike jump's not too bad. She has a little bit of a leg separation, but she is closed a bit there. So that's sufficient. Not bad height, but she's a little bit of flexed knees and definitely her feet are apart. And then here, she's trying to do this, the split full, but not quite. So um, that to me is about a two tenther. Um, back foot is flexed as well, so I might be taking two, two and a half on this. So talking about the cat leap, we did have a little clarification um, that thighs are have to be at horizontal with a 90 degree hip angle and the knees bent either in turnout or in parallel. So failure to reach the horizontal with both legs is up to one um, and incorrect leg position, lack of knee bend is up to two. And if they just um, lack of alternated leg lift and you would just create it as a tuck jump. Our goal is we really wanna see the cat leaps um, come off the beam. How often do we see, they just want that A so that they get the A to D connection or the A to E connection. And we really want to evaluate the cat leap as well and not just forget that it exists. We'll look at this one. If she actually does lift her leg, her legs could be, her thigh could be a little bit higher horizontal on the cat leap, her second thigh. So the first one's horizontal, the second one is, uh, it does kind of get up there. And she actually does get off the beam. Remember, there's a height deduction for cat leaps as well. And then her switch side, um, she's a little bit short. She could be turned a little bit more and obviously the uneven legs, maybe a little bit of split and landing with her feet apart. So now we'll talk about mixed series.
So my hope is that you all broke this series. A little bit insufficient on her split, but she does have some good body posture in the in the leap. But right here, you see both of her legs are completely straight. If they weren't and she just did the arm circle, she might be okay. We also want to remember that we do take deductions for height on the back tuck. Her chest is down. We'd like to see it rotated a little bit more. And then she has the balance error. So this one is pretty nice front aerial. It would be really nice if she just stood up a little bit instead of that lean forward. She would stand up a little quicker. Um, it was slow. You could still give the connection, but I definitely would take a deduction for her feet apart. And then her um, unevenness of her legs. She has pretty good body posture, though. So obviously, when they're doing these mixed series um, and, and any series, actually, you really need to be cautious of what their feet are doing. So not too bad of a back tuck, a little bit of chest down. But right there, she lifts that left foot. Now. You have a four judge panel and two are on one side and two are on the other. Half the panel may see that and the other half may not. Um, and as well as if it's a two judge panel and you're on one side, you may or may not see that other foot lift. So that's the cat leap that we often see. We would like to see this cat leap get off the beam. Well, it hurt. Her thigh does not reach horizontal. That one sort of does, but you know, definitely um, not a very strong cat leap. And it is definitely what we see. And of course we have the balance error on the front aerial. Connected, but very weak cat leap. Do you believe that this was connected? Again, short on the split. Not bad posture, but short on the split. So the more that you can watch these and train your eyes to see where those legs go, uh, the better. But yes, definitely connected. A little bit of balance error and definitely height on that back tuck. The hitch kick to the front aerial. Not too bad. Definitely deductions on the hitch kick. Her leg's not at horizontal. Second one's closer, but the first one definitely wasn't. So maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.15, a little bit of height as well to the front area. A little bit of bent legs. Would like to see her stand up taller. Obviously, she broke this part, but she did connect the split jump to the beat jump if she needed it. So this one... She kind of took a long time to get to where she had to go. She didn't completely stop, but she did take a long time getting there. She kept moving, but I would definitely take tempo and body posture going into that um, backhand spring swing down. So here's another one. Pretty good back tuck. She's trying to get her chest up. She has that little bit of, of tempo in between, but she does not straighten her legs all the way. A little short on the split, and I would definitely take some footwork there too. Okay, let's talk about acro series. Backward acro series and sideward to backward acro series. They are considered broken with a delay in an immediate takeoff of the second element. If the arms move as low as the thighs or behind the thighs further back, and if it is a slow moving attempt. So this series, we expect it to look like it would on floor. It's not quite the same as doing the front to back or front to side. 
you can use your judgment and see what you think about this. So on this one, and again, it can be very difficult to see, but she does shift her foot right there. Right here. That bottom foot is turning. It is turning on the beam. Should not do that in order to get credit for that series. But again, if you're sitting on one side of the beam and that happens on the other side, you may or may not see that. Okay, same with this one. You just watch it fast motion. You're not really watching her feet. You will not notice that she does move. If you're just looking at that front toss. Um, definitely some squat in that. And it looks like she's going right away, but she does move her feet. Just watch her feet. So she does move that left foot. It kind of jumps just a little tiny bit. Here's what people keep trying to get credit for. So back tuck, back tuck. Not saying that it isn't ever connectable, but highly unlikely that it would be connected. And she actually does them pretty well, but she does swing those arms back, way back behind those thighs. Again, that front to back. So she does definitely has a foot movement and actually a little balance error as well. So that would be broken as well. Here's a series that we would all love to see. Again, no question that that's connected. This series would be good if it wasn't broken. <laughs> I, mean, was just, I put this in because I just thought it was a very interesting series. You don't, certainly don't often see a one arm front handspring. Um, and I was like, oh, kind of sad that she broke it because it really was kind of a cool series. Okay, so let's talk about some relaxed and incorrect footwork on the non-value part throughout the exercise. It's up to three. So you can see what we'd really like to see. We'd like to see nice high releves in our turns. Um, the one on the bottom right, beautiful releve, and the same one on the left side, um, nice releve. And then when they're in that nice lunge position as the one girl is in the center there, uh, it would be really nice to see a nice high arch in her foot and actually see her calf muscle there. And that tells you that she is really tight and she's really trying to do that uh, nice forced arch. And you can see everything else that she does, her feet are nicely pointed. We're just gonna watch some footwork. You notice everything that she does, her feet are pointed as soon as they leave the beam even in between those leaps. She steps with a nice pointed toe into her leaps as well. Even this nice little side movement, just really pretty and really elegant because her feet are constantly pointing. She's really working her toes, working her feet. So here's some um, not so great footwork. As you can see, um, just stepping onto a flat foot on the left, the girl in the center, well, her left foot's kind of pointed, but her right foot tucked underneath her could be nice and pointed. It would look nice. And then the other one, however, she has a sickled foot in the back as well. So Definitely um, footwork on those. You can see here, just kind of a little flat, not, not quite on the balls of her feet. She's trying a little bit here and there, but right there, she could have a really nice four starch to make that look really pretty. Started trying a little bit harder there. <laughs> but there we go, reaching for that back of the beam and stepping flat footed right into those that leap series.
in correct body alignment. We looked at that first gymnast, nice and straight, in perfect alignment. Um, the second one, she's got that hunched shoulder look, which we do often see, especially if they're not confident. Sometimes they tend to lean forward a little bit. And then, of course, there's the third one with her little stomach sticking out and her little buttock area kind of sticking out as well. So it would really be nice to see her have some better alignment. The definition of alignment is basically arrangement in a straight line. So here's this little girl. She's got really good posture and everything is in a nice straight line. Even her, her knees are together, her toes are pointed, and it just that those little bitty things make it look very different. Just some other good examples of body alignment on our non-value part elements. So nice split with her back foot pointed um, and then the little girl there with just nice shoulders down, chin up, nice hands, extended feet. And then here's what we see often on body alignment with non-value part elements, um, like the little girl on the left, just leaning forward and as she's trying to stand up and then the one in the middle, she's actually looking back to the end of the beam. She's not trying to feel back there, but in order to not feel the back of the beam, she's actually sacrificing her body alignment a little bit. And then the last little one as well, you know, she should be standing up a little taller or had a little bit more erect and not leaning her shoulders forward so much. So we're going to look at some routines. So from an artistic perspective, I thought she was very artistic. She um, she had nice extension on everything, her legs, her feet, her arms. Um, and then she did attempt to do the front aerial to the scale and she didn't make it. So she didn't have the opportunity for the plus one, but. I know you all went, oh, because we all did. <laughs> we were so sad when she fell. Um, even with that little balance error um, and everything that happened, she um, actually did score a 9-1 on this routine at Nationals and um, with that fall. So here's just another one um, from Nationals, too, that was um, one of our higher scoring routines. So she was our only standing full. It was a very nice routine. We um, actually, I believe our range was nine, eight to nine, nine on that routine because she did have the plus one and the only gymnast to really have two E's in her routine, um, acro E's, which was very, very nice to watch. This is another routine that I just thought she was just beautiful and artistic and I really enjoyed her routine as I thought that she, um, you know, she took her eyes off the beam for sure and had some different focus, which I thought was great. And, um, and she just used her hands um, as part of her expression as well. So the, the routine previous, um, I didn't think she was quite as, as beautiful artistic with fingers and, and this and that, but but she was sufficient. So, I mean, there's sufficient and there's that 
extreme that we see too. And, you know, you, you really need to make that judgment call as to whether you think it was sufficient. They don't all have to be so phenomenal, but it is nice that when you do see those routines that just make you kind of go, oh, wow, that was amazing.